Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number five. This one is bagged wet layup, a mix of carbon and glass, on a Corcel foam core using total boat 5 to 1 epoxy. Here's the laminate schedule. On the outside, a 12 ounce plus or minus 45 fiberglass uh, with a 6 ounce carbon uni against the core. Here are the stack of materials, the carbon, the e-glass, the core, and the bag stack. And this is the vacuum pump and the catch pot we're going to use. It's a pretty... I pre-measured out the resin. We're going to mix 12 ounces. And I'm doing this by volume, which with a 5 to 1 system is only makes sense if you're making a fair amount. This is about the minimum that I would do that way. Stirring it up for about a minute, scraping the sides as I go. And I've placed the first layer of the biax on the mold surface on the table, wetting it through from the top. This is 12 ounce material. It wets through pretty well, but it's still kind of hard to get all the fiber bundles nice and wet, so it takes a while. You really have to work it in. The bag should press it down pretty well and draw most of the air out and being on the bottom it'll have time to soak up. Really it just takes time and resin to wet out fiberglass. The nice thing about fiberglass is it forces you to pay attention to how you're really wetting out whereas with carbon you can get away with a lot more and it still looks okay. Fiberglass gives you a better sense of how you're really doing. So here is the uni. This is six ounce carbon uni and really the reason I'm using this is just to show how the unidirectional material handles and also because it will show how well wet out the glass is when the panel's finished. Here's the core. This is perforated on 50 millimeter centers. It's a about five pound core, Corcel M80 and I'm wetting out one side of the core and I'll flip this over after adding some more resin trying to make sure there's enough resin here to do the core bonding and not suck too much out of the skins so on the top skin wet this out this is a six ounce uni wets out really nicely and the fiber bundles are pretty small heavier unis harder to wet out and I'll drop in the last ply of the 12 ounce biaxial. This is a balanced laminate around the core. So it should come out pretty flat. Let's try to make the test panels that way. And you can see the carbon coming through. It's a lot harder to see how you're doing if you're just wetting it out against the core, which is a similar color. So I'll work this in as best I can before putting on the bag stack. Maybe a little more. And that looks pretty good. And now for some peel ply. Try and get that down as smooth as possible. Followed by some perf film. And here I'm using two pieces to show what a lap in the per film looks like. When we get the bag down. I've left that lap about an inch and a half, which is more than it should be. And you'll be able to see when we get the bag down what that looks like. Putting mesh over the whole thing. Uh, and I, ideally I wouldn't. Uh, but in this case I just want to show how, how much resin we can suck out when we put the mesh on top. And clamping the hose inlet. That's just some infusion mesh wrapped around the tip of the hose makes a nice cheap bag connector for wet layup you don't have to worry about getting goop in an expensive fitting and here goes the bag I put the tacky tape right down on the Teflon it'll make it easy to take up and the only pleats in this are going to be down where the tube comes in because it's a pretty flat panel 
Find them with very flat things if you can avoid making pleats. Unnecessary pleats only add complication and trouble. And it's nice to have a bag that doesn't have any need to have wrinkles in it. Or um, if you don't, if it doesn't have to. So there's one little pleat on each end down there sealing it up. I'll switch on the pump and suck this down. Chase that tacky tape around. A little listen. It's really come down. You can see the resin boiling up out of the holes in the core and in the perf, filling up the breather and soaking into the mesh. For heavy wet layups, putting mesh over the top is great because once the breather is absorbed all the resin and doesn't breathe anymore, you need something to transfer any additional air. Now you can see as the resin bleeds, that's the lap in the perforated film. And where the two perf films are overlapped, the holes are blocked and so it doesn't bleed as well. It's good to avoid that. There's the lap. You can see how there's not as much material resin bleeding through and all of the air and the resin coming up through those holes. A lot of bleed here. And there's the one pleat with the hose going through. Pump is reading about 27 inches of mercury, which is quite a bit too much for this. I'll show you that when we demold. So here we are. It's all cured up. Now one thing I did gave this some heat in the cure. Ran it up to about 40 C. And that caused the resin viscosity to drop. That combined with the high vacuum and the mesh. And we bled off quite a bit of resin here. That's the one thing that will be neat to see about this panel. See if there's enough left. Let's see that. Super crunchy. It's like a ply all of its own. I'll be interested to see how much resin we have left in here. And you can see the top layer is already looking a little white where the heavy bundles of glass are. I'm going to slip this little putty knife carefully in there and demold it. I have these paint stir sticks with a little wedge on the end. Once I open it up, I try and use those because they don't scratch the Teflon as bad as the, the putty knife. This should pop off nicely tapes being more trouble than anything else. And there it goes. Uh, you can see the bottom. All that resin. Enough of it bled out that you can still see some dry fiber bundles that weren't there when we first wet it out. And it's a not nice solid thing but there's a lot of porosity. And a lot of resin should be still in there. So there it is up close. You can see the stitching, some dry fiber, lots of porosity. Core is nicely bonded. It feels very rugged, but there's a lot of air where there should be resin. And if you're trying to build something super light, maybe it's better to bleed some resin out, but you got to be mindful that resin is important. And if you bleed too much out, it will be prone to breaking. So you can see very light compared to our estimate. Estimated somewhere around 12 ounces. It is 9 and 3 eighths ounces. So that is super light. Resin content in this probably well below 40 percent which is not ideal. Things to change for next time. Cure it at a lower temperature to keep the resin viscosity down. Don't run the vacuum up so high. Keep it maybe down around 15 to 18 and Try to avoid putting that green mesh over the top of the whole thing. Thanks for checking it out.